Hi everybody, um, my name is Connor Ray and I'm going to be taking you on a virtual tour of Rose Holman's campus today, which I'm very excited about. A um, little bit about myself before we get started, I'm a senior chemical engineering and chemistry double major here at Rose, um, so I've been around campus for, for a good while. Um, I'm an RA in one of the freshman residence halls, so I'll talk about that as we kind of get through the tour and talk a bit more about the residence hall things. I've actually lived in the same hall for four years, go Bloomberg. Um, so yeah, we're going to get started here. Um, what we're looking at right now is just Rose Holman's webpage, rosehallman.edu. If you want to check this out yourself, you go to the Visit tab right here, and this is where you have all the information about um, what it would be like to visit campus. I know because of the circumstances right now, we can't get onto campus, but there are plenty of things here that let you kind of explore um, the different things that Rose has to offer. So if you click this Let's Start tab, um, that'll kind of take you through a virtual preview day. So if you were to come on the campus, you kind of walk through some of the same stuff that you would experience if you were able to come on and visit. Uh, Let's Connect will actually get you in touch with some of our um, wonderful admissions staff. So they're great people, and they'll put you in touch with whoever you want to talk to, whether that's faculty um, or different students even. I've had calls in the past couple months um, with students just asking questions about the school and my experience. So definitely recommend clicking that and kind of getting some you know, individual contact with, with some people at Rose. It's, it's super helpful. Um, this Let's Discover tab just kind of talks through some of the different research opportunities at school, um, some of the different things that students are involved with, just a glimpse of what's going on on campus in general, different projects, stuff like that. So really kind of cool place to see a bit about what's going on on campus. Um, we're going to go through this Let's Explore tab right here. And like I said, you can walk through this year yourself if you want to on your own time. Um, but I'm just going to kind of take you guys through and show you a bit of campus and talk about some of the stuff, kind of what you would experience in a typical tour if you were to come and, and visit Rose. So it's a really cool tour uh, put together by Google Earth, as you can see there. So we're just going to kind of walk through things. We're going to start on the academic side of stuff and then kind of shift to athletics for a little bit and then go more to the residence hall union kind of stuff. So um, we'll take a little tour right here. So let's get started. So yeah, so this is Rose Holman's campus, um, as you can see from this nice view. Um, here, where my mouse is kind of highlighting, is more of the academic side of things. So campus is kind of split itself into like different sections. That kind of makes it easier for us to walk around them, um, virtually anyway. So we've got our academic side of stuff over here, some of our athletic facilities more in the back, and we have a baseball field up in front you can't see right now. And then our residence halls are over on Speed Lake right here, and our union as well. So campus is somewhat, you know, kind of cleanly organized into different sections depending on what, what you want to do. So if you were to come visit campus, this is probably your first stop would be the admissions office. So right as you pull in in the middle of Hadley Hall right here, these are some of our lovely admissions staff. Um, they are some of the best people and super, super fun to talk to. So if you want to, like I said earlier, click that connect button and um, get to talk to some of them about Rose Holman. They are phenomenal people to talk to. These are our wonderful tour guides here. You can see me peeking back there. Um, a bunch of different people to give tours. So if in the future you're able to get on campus, these are some of the people that might be taking you around. So a lot of different experiences, a lot of different backgrounds. So we try to match up our tour guides with um, students that kind of match what they're interested in or similar uh, majors and stuff like that. So really kind of a nice personalized system there. So we're going to start off in the quad. So this is kind of the central sort of outdoor area between all of our academic halls. So they're kind of, our academic buildings are sort of U-shaped almost. So it starts in Olin over there and then you go through Hadley into Munch. Munch kind of extends along this way and then Crapo comes along right here. Um, so it makes sort of a U and then Myers kind of sticks out in the back. You can't really see it from this angle, but in the middle of that U is our quad right here. So just a nice green grassy area in the middle of everything. Um, there's a lot of really cool 360 pictures here. Our library is also right here as well. So um, if you were to come from that way, this is where the residence halls and the union are. So if you were to walk this way, um, you kind of walk along these paths here to get to your classes. So this place is usually bustling with activity um, in between passing periods. So Rose actually has um, it kind of reminds me of how high school used to be. We have like a bell that rings in between periods. Um, we have 50 minute class periods that break up the day and then a 10 minute passing period in between. I really like it because I know the bell keeps my professors on track more than anything. So um, I've always been, been fond of that system personally. So, um, But yeah, and you can see kind of down here how it all connects together. You have Crapo, like I said earlier, connecting to the library. Um, it's just a nice green space. Sometimes classes will come on here during the day. I know I've seen in one or two classes um, Dr. Minster will come out and do like a lecture on the lawn or something like that when it's nice outside. But um, yeah, you'll see this space used for a lot of different outdoor activities throughout the year. Um, it's a really a nice, a nice space in the middle of everything. We're going to start on one end, um, Olin Hall right here. So um, you'll kind of do the street view, but I'll click on these pictures here to get a more better inside view. So there you can see a nice picture of Olin Hall right by 
Um, BSB, right next door, so if you live in that residence hall, it's one of the freshman halls, so it's just a walk right across the street to this building. Um, all of our different academic departments and stuff are, are grouped together, so you, you know it's kind of nice to have all your professors in one spot and all your classes kind of in one area. So Olin has a bunch of classrooms, but they also locate, it's where the um, chemical engineering and civil engineering departments are located, so a lot of different faculty, like I said, are located there. I had a lot of classes in there since I'm a chemical engineering student. I took a lot of classes in Olin Hall. Um, this space right here is our chemical engineering unit operations lab, so a really cool space for students to use. And pretty much every engineering major has some version of this um, built into their curriculum, typically in senior year. Um, so for chemical engineering students, just from my personal experience, the way it works is that um, at the end of your junior year and the first two quarters of your senior year, you'll get assigned one of these different projects in the lab. So right here you can see our fluid flow experiment. You'll get put into a group um, of two or three students, and then you'll get pretty much assigned one of these units. and. You'll have an advisor who's one of the chemical engineering faculty, and they'll kind of say, all right, here's what you have to work with. Um, design an experiment, collect some data, write it all up, and you end up you know, running trials and experiments for a couple weeks. Um, you write all that up in a big report. I mean, it, they come out to you know, 20, 30 pages in the end. You'll give a formal presentation to your class. You learn a lot of, it's a lot of taking kind of what you learn in the classroom and sort of applying it to more hands-on stuff that you're able to do um, in this sort of lab setting, which is really kind of cool to take everything you learned and just kind of, you know, have a self-guided um, walkthrough of different chemical engineering unit operations. So we have a heat exchanger back here, fluid flow, like I said, reverse osmosis, um, tubular flow reactors, a bunch of cool chemical engineering stuff. I think we have a picture, yeah, our big old distillation column right there. So you can kind of see the second floor of the Olin lobby kind of peeking in there too. So you also learn a lot of really cool things like um, that are really going to be helpful when you end up working someday. So a lot of Rose Holman's curriculum is kind of geared towards getting you ready to be a professional engineer in your future. So obviously working in groups is an important thing. You know, you're never going to be alone as an engineer. You're always going to be working on a team. So that's good experience there. You also learn stuff like how to write memos and things like that because, you know, your boss someday in the future is not going to read some 30-page document. You know, he wants a paragraph to read before he walks into the next board meeting or something like that. So you learn how to develop those skills and um, just a lot of different professional communication skills in this sort of lab course as well. And, and like I mentioned, a lot of other majors have this kind of similar coursework built into their schedule. So mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, there's always going to be some kind of hands-on, you know, application of all the stuff you've, you've learned in the past couple of years, working with clients, that sort of stuff. So we also have a senior design course as well. Um, where students will be able to um, design something. So for every major, it looks kind of different. So for me personally, my design group, we designed a chemical plant that produced a certain chemical. Um, and all those design projects typically work with a Rose Holman alumni who's out doing engineering somewhere in the real world. So it's kind of nice to have that connection there and to be able to just under the way to kind of put everything together from your past four years. So um, right here you can see one of our civil engineering labs. So I did mention that Olin had our civil engineering department. So they have a bunch of different um, structures lab, different materials testing, concrete, asphalt, um, all that kind of stuff for, like I said, a lot of hands-on lab work. So you'll find that a lot of the courses here at Rose are reinforced with, with lab stuff, um, doing work inside the laboratory, because obviously engineering is a lot of hands-on, you know, taking the theory in the classroom and applying it to real life. So it's kind of nice to have that, that hands-on experience at the end of the day. Um, right here is Munch Hall, so this is our oldest and, and biggest academic hall. Um, there's a lot going on in here, there's a lot of different departments, a lot of different floors. Um, I'm actually going to, we can click through some of the pictures, and then we have a couple 360 pictures inside I can take you through. So one of the views you see from the front of campus, really pretty building. Um, like I said, it's the oldest one here. So this um, is the top floor of Munch. This is where our biology and biomedical engineering departments are located. I like to work up here a lot, um, just because I really like the open skylight lighting. It would be kind of nice throughout the day. Um, pretty much all of our academic halls have like seating in the hallways and stuff like that. So if you have a period off, like let's say you have class at 10 and you're off at 11, you don't want to walk all the way back to your res hall to do some work. You can just find one of these seats or a table, uh, meet up with some friends, get some work done during the day. Kind of a nice, you know, common area. A lot of different spaces just to get work done or relax in between classes, which is kind of nice. Um, what else? So we have Munch Commons right here. So this is a very common hangout spot uh, during the day, too. If you just have a large area, a bunch of different tables and stuff like that, you'll see this place is hopping full of activity throughout most of the school day. Um, and our mail room is right next to it. I think we can actually get a view of that later on. Um, a lot of people, whenever they visit, always ask what this big plaque map is up on the wall. Um, so I believe this was a gift from one of the senior class that graduated a couple years ago, so I know um, typically every year the senior class will kind of raise money to give a gift back to the school, whether it be scholarships, or I know one of the years they did um, the expansion to the dock on our lake. 
Um, I know this year we're working towards getting a, um, a nice memorial bench put outside a Hat Hatfield Hall. Um, this was, I forget, it might have been 2011. I, I could be wrong on the year, but it is a placement of where Rose Holman students went after they graduated. So all those little, like, you can kind of barely see them here, but there's a bunch of different dots stuck onto the map um, that kind of shows where Rose Holman students went after they graduated that year. I don't think it's been updated since. Uh, it's one of those things where nobody really knows whose responsibility it is to update that. So um, it's a nice snapshot of where Rose Holman kids went. A lot of, you know, people from the Midwest, obviously, but you see some going down to Texas, Washington, some of the East Coast, some international too, so you get a lot of people all over the place. People really understand, you know, in the engineering industry, um, how, how good of a school Rose Holman is. So you get a lot of recruiters from across the country when we come in for career fairs and stuff like that. So um, me personally, I'll actually be starting um, a full-time job in July as a patent agent out in Denver, um, so a bit farther from the Midwest. I grew up in Chicago my whole life, so it's kind of cool to get that change of scenery. But yeah, you can you can end up anywhere. Um, this is one of our electrical engineering rooms, so I know some mechanical engineering students take some class in here as well as mechanical engineering students. This is one of the kind of cooler spaces because um, where the students are all looking is up at a lecture up in front. I think, yeah, you can probably see this is what that would look like. So all of our classes are taught by um, a PhD, you know, doctor, professor. Uh, we don't have any TAs or anything like that. It's always just going to be the same professor throughout your class the entire time you're taking it. So they know your name after the first week because, you know, you're only going to be in a class of, you know, maybe 30 kids at most, 35. I think that was my biggest class, was probably around 35 students. And after that, it just goes down as you kind of get into more specific stuff. So, um, I mean, this is a not atypical classroom size at all. You know, you got 15 maybe kids in this room all around. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really kind of nice to have that kind of smaller environment. But these rooms are cool because you can have a lecture up in front and then the professor can say like, all right, turn around and, you know, do some of the stuff we're talking about on these different, um, electrical equipment behind you so it's kind of nice to be able to have a lecture right away and then kind of turn around and do stuff more hands-on right behind you which is is pretty neat so one of the cool spaces in munch um this is one of our biology labs i believe i haven't done a lot of bio here at rose so i'm not super familiar with the spaces but um a lot of different laboratory settings like i said this is one of our i believe one of our mechanical engineering labs downstairs um they do a lot of like i said hands-on work too so um let's see if we can get i know there are a couple 360 views you can hop in here and look at so if we go right here, I think this will show us Munch Cafe, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, so up on the top floor of Munch, so this is, up there is that first, you know, top floor area I showed you. If you keep walking, you get to Munch Cafe, which is one of our coffee shops on campus. So um, one of the things you'll get that's part of your meal plan is called Declining Balance. It's essentially just like cash you can spend at different places on campus. And this is one of the places you can spend that. So it's just a little coffee shop in the middle of all the academic halls. So it's kind of nice to have that in the middle of your day. I would get a cup of coffee from here every morning. Um, before I started class, for like a dollar fifty, super nice. The people who work there are also phenomenal. Um, but they also have like breakfast sandwiches and pastries and fruit and granola bars and all that good stuff too. Smoothies, um, kind of whatever you're looking for. So it's nice to have that in the middle of everything. And if you go down these stairs, you get to that common area I mentioned earlier. Um, I believe we can get a view of that too, as well as the mail room, if I'm not mistaken. Let me try to do a zoom in here. Ooh, no, that's the same one. Hold on a sec. We zoom in on this spot right here. You can get a peek at Munch Commons, like I said. Um, so this is just a picture taken during the day. As you can see, a lot of students out here doing work. There's that plaque I mentioned earlier. Um, this is our mail room right behind them. It's kind of one I want to show this. So when you come here as a student, you get assigned your own mailbox, and that'll be your same mailbox for all four years. So if mom or dad send any care packages or anything like that, um, you don't have to worry about changing addresses or anything. So you can check this for letters and stuff. And if you ever get a package, it just goes, you get an email to your student account. that says like, hey, you have a package. Come pick it up. And you show them your ID and you pick up your package. So really a nice system in the middle of all the academic buildings. So you can just check it during the day. That's what I typically do, um, which is kind of nice. So yeah, so that is Munch Hall. Um, we're going to move on to the next stop on this tour. So um, it's all kind of self-guided in the beginning. We're going to kind of go off the rails at the end here. Um, but this next part is the new academic buildings. So this is this kind of Google Earth picture is a bit outdated. So this lab that you see right here is not there anymore. Um, it's been torn down and construction has kind of closed off pretty much most of this area right now if you go visit our campus at the moment. So we have um, a new academic building. You can see a rendering of it here, kind of what it's going to look like. That's going to be built. Um, it's going to be ready for use by the 2021 school year, I believe. Um, Really kind of a cool, neat space. I know the chemistry department's super excited about it. We're going to get a bunch of new chemistry labs, which is super cool. So you can kind of see some of this base here and go inside for a view right here. These are really nice um, renderings here. 
but you can kind of see the space they're going to make. They're going to be a lot more new classroom spaces, more group work areas, um, different laboratory settings, and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of really neat spaces, and like I said, it's going to be ready in the next couple of years here. So um, by the time, if you're watching this and you're you know applying to college, or that's going to be something you're going to be doing the next couple of years, this will be ready for you to use for, for most of the time that you're here, which is super exciting. I'm I'm a little bummed out I don't get to use it for my time here, but it'll be kind of cool to come and come back and see what it looks like when it's all done. So, yeah, very neat space for sure. And then after that we have Myers, so that's kind of what goes around the new academic building. So before the new one is done, this is the newest building as of right now. Um, I've had a bunch of different classes in here. I've had chemistry classes, um, literature classes, a math class. So kind of whatever. There's just a bunch of different classrooms. There's also a lot of different lab space. That's kind of what the main um, the focus of all these pictures are anyway, so it's a couple of different labs with different lasers and things in them. I know the biomedical engineering department uses some of the labs up here. There's a couple spare chemistry labs in here as well. Um, this is one of the cool rooms you can kind of see on the first floor. If you ever walk into this building, um, there's this huge like kind of glass wall with a bunch of obviously yellow light on the inside, and that's this clean room right here. So this is our MEMS lab. They do a lot of like micro scale devices. So um, a lot of really small scale stuff. They wear the full, you know, get up with the, the booties and the, the gloves and mask and everything like that. It has to be like totally contaminant free um, because of the small scale nature of all the stuff that they're doing. So I know it's it's a super clean room. Um, so it's, it's really kind of a cool thing to see them working during the day. Different like acoustic room, as you can see right here. Um, so yeah, just a lot of different space for, for student lab activity. I haven't done a ton of stuff in here, so I don't know as much about this building as probably someone who's who's done a lot of lab work in here. Um, but a very nice space. I like to work in here sometimes. They have a lot of cool desk areas out in front, so that's always a nice thing. And then over here we have Crapeville Hall. So Crapeville Hall has our math department as well as some of our chemistry labs. So that's kind of the main um, stuff going on. It's also not Crapo like it looks like it might be pronounced. It's, it's Crapo. Um, <laughs> so you can kind of see some views from the outside. We also have the greenhouse right next door to it. So um, different plants and different biology experiments going on in there as well. I've never had the chance to go in there personally, but it's kind of cool to walk by it every day. Um, you can get a peek in one of our classrooms here. And like I said, you know, typical classroom, just some desks and chairs. Um, there'll be a whiteboard in the front, usually the back as well, a couple um, projectors in case, you know, they want to use PowerPoint slides or whatever, and a professor up at the front giving a lecture. So um, we have a couple lecture halls on campus, but they're not really used for lectures a ton. They're really more for presentations and kind of bigger events like that. But um, I have actually had a couple classes in there, and it always feels kind of weird because it's usually, you know, like, 10 to 20 people in this giant lecture hall for, you know, 150 folks. So it always feels a bit more, um, a bit more empty than anything. But, um, yeah, most of your classes are going to be in this kind of smaller setting where you just have a couple tables and chairs, like I said. So really kind of a nice personalized environment for sure. Um, and because it's so small with the professors, like, like I said, they know you after the first week. Um, and their, their offices are always open too. Like whenever they're around and they're not teaching a class, um, even if it's not their office hours, they're happy to have you come in and ask them questions. Um, all the faculty who are here at Rose, I mean, they're here to help you succeed. Like, they want you to do um, as well as you want to do. I mean, they're not, Rose isn't a huge research school or anything like that. We're not here to get a bunch of grant funding. So all the professors that come here um, are mostly here for teaching. Like, that's their primary focus um, in their job is teaching students. So they'll do whatever they can to kind of help you get along and um, get through, you know, the classes you're taking with them, which is which is really nice to have that kind of support network built in. Um, right here we have our library. So this is right next to all of our academic halls. So there's a lot going on in the library, so you can see some of the pictures kind of here um, of the interior space. I'm actually going to take um, one of the 360 views inside because I can kind of point to different stuff um, as we look around here. So I, I believe, yeah, there we go. There it popped up. I really love these 360 pictures. You kind of get to look around and everything. So, so this is our library. You kind of walk in from over there. Um, this first floor area is a lot of group work spaces. So you can see a lot of tables and chairs out in the areas. Um, there's different like glass rooms around the side. You can actually reserve online um, just for free for a couple hours as a student. So if you have like a group meeting or if you have like a Skype interview or something like that, you can reserve one of these spaces. And they're pretty much soundproof. So you can get a lot of good work done in there, which is nice. Um, over here, in that kind of back corner, we have the Center for Student Economic Success. So that's run by Sarah Forbes, super great lady. Um, her That whole office's job is to essentially help um, with the academic transition from high school to college. You know, Rose Holman gets a lot of kids who went to high school, super smart, top of their class, breezed through everything, got straight A's, never had to study. And then they come to Rose and it's like, oh man, this, this is actually pretty tough. Um, so what 
that whole office's job is to kind of help um, pick up the skills that you might not have gotten in high school, like how to study, how to prioritize things, um, how to effectively manage your time, that sort of stuff, just to stay afloat academically. So Rose provides a lot of resources to help students succeed academically, which is really nice. I mean, it's a tough school, but they they make sure that everyone who's here, you know, has everything they need to succeed. And um, truly everybody that does get accepted into Rose can get through it, like with working with other people, working with the resources you're given. Um, it is is definitely possible. So back here, this is a bit of an older photo, but since been kind of remodeled a bit and improved. Um, this is our Center for or, uh, Global Engagement. Yeah, so um, if you're interested in study abroad or anything like that, this is the office that you would go to. Um, the fantastic people in there, super nice to talk to, and they're willing to work out sort of any different, um, whatever kind of schedule you have, they're willing to work with that and kind of get you to study abroad if that's something you want to do. Um, Rose has partnerships with a bunch of different schools all across the world. I know some of our, excuse me, some of our bigger schools or bigger countries, I should say, that we go to. Um, Japan is a big one, I know. Germany, a um, different, couple different places in Europe. I know someone who went to study in Argentina for a year. Um, so a lot of different opportunities to kind of wherever you want to end up. I know actually in the chemical engineering department in particular, every year they'll send a group of students to do this year design project in Germany, um, which is really kind of cool. So wherever you want to end up going, they'll help you get there. Even if it's, you can study abroad over the summer too. I almost did that my freshman year. Um, you can head different programs over the summer to help get ahead in classes and stuff like that because they'll count all the credits towards your degree. So a lot of times with all the grants and scholarships you end up getting, it ends up actually being a bit cheaper to study abroad than it is to come to school at Rose for that quarter, um, which is really kind of nice. So upstairs in the library, we don't have a great picture of it. Um, we have our, it's more like a library actual setting. It's a bit quieter. That's where all the books actually are. Um, so if you want a bit quieter workspace, that's upstairs. Downstairs, um, we have the learning center. So there's a lot going on down there too. Um, we have the, it used to be called the um, Homer Hotline, now it's called Ask Rose. Um, it's a job that you can have as a Rose Hallman student. I actually worked there my freshman year, it was super fun. You answer phone calls and emails and chats from students across the country with homework help. So you'll get calls from, you know, sixth graders doing geometry or, you know, eighth graders doing algebra or high schoolers doing calculus. And they'll call with, with homework questions and you'll be able to help them out. It's a super fun job. Um, especially if you like working with, with younger students, which is really kind of fun. Um, one of the better paying jobs on campus, too, which is which is super nice as well. Um, down there, we also have Learning Center tutors. So for Rose Holman students, there are other Rose Holman students who are there to help tutor you through your classes. So if you're stuck um, doing a calc problem or something like that, they're open during the day, like regular business hours, like 8 to 5 or something like that. But they also have office hours from like 7 to 10 at night. So if you're up late doing homework, um, they're more than happy to help you out with whatever you might be working on. Um, we also have the testing center downstairs. They have a bunch of old exams and stuff like that that professors have given out in the past. So if you have, let's say, like a, a physics test coming up next week and you don't know what a Rose Holman exam is like, you don't know what that professor's exams are like, you can go down there and pick up one of that professor's exams from a year or two ago just to kind of see what they're like, maybe help you study a bit, do some more practice problems, and also just get a feel for the format of everything. Um, so really kind of a nice way, like I said, another tool just to kind of help you succeed a bit more easily at Rose, um, which is super nice. So then moving on from there, we have our two innovation centers. So we have the BIC and the KIC. Um, this picture is actually a bit outdated, so if I um, use this little street view guy here, we'll see a, a building magically appear. Hold on, let me click in this bubble right here. So this is an older view, and as you can see, as we the street view is a bit more updated. So as you can see here, we actually have a full other <laughs> another building attached right there. Um, so this one that kind of comes out here is the KIC. Um, that's the newer edition, and then the BIC is in the back. They stand for the Branham Innovation Center and then the Kramer Innovation Center. So these spaces are all for student-directed, sort of like extracurricular, um, hands-on building stuff. So if you were on like robotics or anything like that in high school or Science Olympiad, I know they had some events like this. Um, this is a great kind of analog for that, but at a, at a much higher setting, obviously. Um, let me click here and see if we can click through some of these pictures. So yeah, that's a nice picture of the outside. If you get to the inside, so this is the inside of the kick. Um, we have a bunch of different workspaces, obviously, um, a lot of different tools and stuff, and there's a bunch, it's kind of sanctioned off at what the different teams are. So right here we have a robotics team. So they have a bunch of different sub-teams in there. They have like a Mars rover team. They have a combat robotics team, an underwater robotics team. So kind of whatever you're interested in, they have stuff to do. The Maker Lab back here, they do a lot of um, 3D printing. I think they have like, I mean, last I checked, I can think of at least like seven off the top of my head about where they are, different 3D printers, but they probably have more than that, to be honest. So that's something you're interested in all. They have a bunch of students there to help you do that, and it's all free, too. So 
I actually printed off a gift for a friend of mine um, for this past Christmas with the Maker Lab, and that's just, you know, you just design the part yourself and get it printed on their printers, and it's it's super convenient. Um, but if you have any personal projects and stuff you want to do, they also have, like, laser cutters and things like that that you can use as well. Um, and like I said, everything in these buildings is, is free for students. It's all hands-on. All you have to do is just go through, like, a training lesson or two just to figure out how to, like, use the equipment itself. But after that, um, you're welcome to kind of go at it and build stuff for your team or for your own personal projects. Here you can see the Miracle Lab a bit closer up. It's expanded a lot since this picture was taken. There's a lot more um, equipment going on in there. We also have a full like fabrication lab in this building as well too. So they have a big old CNC machine and a bunch of different kind of larger scale fabrication stuff. There's also some classrooms along the side back here. So different mechanical engineering um, classrooms and labs. There's like a thermo fluids lab. Um, there's some wind tunnels in here too for different aerodynamics testings. So a lot of cool spaces in here. Um, and then this is the BIC. This is more kind of like a garage feel to it. So this is where we have some like larger scale competition teams. So um, human powered vehicle right here. They design a very aerodynamic um, human powered vehicle. Um, so they take that to compete in different races across the world pretty much. I know, I think it was my sophomore year, they went to Australia for a competition. So a lot of our big teams get a lot of funding from, from Rose, but also from third party like companies and stuff like that. Because, you know, people who recruit college students love to see um, people getting that hands-on experience before you even graduate. So we have a couple different teams in here. Um, Grand Prix Engineering, they make pretty much a scaled-down Formula One car every year. So if you're into car stuff, um, they build a car pretty much from scratch. I mean, they design it all online or on, like, CAD and stuff like that. They'll do, like, aerodynamic testing through a supercomputer at ISU's campus. Um, they'll weld everything, paint everything, put all the electronics together, the, the engine, all that kind of stuff. So it's really kind of cool for a lot of hands-on things. Um, Concrete Canoe is a big civil engineering team. They make a canoe out of concrete, <laughs> as the name implies. And they take that to compete at the different um, civil engineering conferences across the country as well. Um, I'm on the Chemi Car team. We make a car powered by a chemical reaction every year. Um, kind of small, maybe the size of like two shoe boxes or so. It's not a huge thing that you would ride in, but it's kind of cool to, you know, blend mechanical stuff with some chemistry stuff as well. Um, so I get just a bunch of different opportunities and a bunch of different resources for you to um, learn how to use different machine stuff too. We have a full machine shop in here with, you know, a lathe and sawmills and presses and all that kind of stuff. So, um, and we'll, training lessons offered throughout the year for different safety and different ways to use um, the equipment. We have a paint booth, um, a bunch of different kind of cool stuff to use. So really a great space. Definitely get involved with that if you like building stuff. That is that is the, the place to go. Uh, moving on, we have the Oakley Observatories. This is a cool spot, kind of remote on campus, um, but if you like space stuff, this is definitely the, the spot for you. Uh, I'm going to get a cool spot of the inside here. So you can see all of the different telescopes they have set up. Um, this roof obviously runs over these rails and retracts to protect it from the, the rain and the elements and stuff. Some older telescopes here, but they're super nice ones. Um, I actually came up here a couple years back. There was that solar eclipse that passed over the Midwest and kind of got um, over Terre Haute pretty cool. So they had a huge viewing party for the eclipse and everything and put a bunch of neat filters on the telescopes. So you can kind of get a really cool close-up view. So... Really a nice space. Um, we have an astronomy club, so that's stuff you can do if you're just interested in like an extracurricular sense. We also have classes and coursework that revolve around um, the physics of stars and physics of galaxies and stuff like that. So um, really kind of cool ways to incorporate this stuff in here into the classroom as well, which is really kind of neat. And then moving on from there, uh, the academic barns. This is across the road here, so let me zoom out a bit. So... Um, Rose Hallman's campus is right along here, and then just across the, the main road right there, we have this is a new space for civil engineering students. Um, actually, right by the, the president's house is kind of tucked away right back here. Um, but this is a cool space for civil, civil students to kind of um, test out a lot of their design stuff. So this is kind of similar to what the chemical engineering um, lab was like that I showed you earlier, but, but for civil engineering students. So they do a lot of different materials testing and structures testing kind of at a larger scale. So a lot of times they'll design something in the classroom and then come over to the, um, the barn over here and do some testing on it to see how it matches up with what they expected it to do uh, based on their calculations. So a really neat space. Um, like I said, a lot of larger scale civil engineering stuff. So, and this is really a, a new space too. I think it was made um, just a year or two ago. So, really kind of a cool area um, for that sort of stuff. So, that wraps up um, academic side of things. So now we're going to take a look at some of our athletic facilities really quick, and then some of our res hall stuff, and then um, that'll be that'll be it for the tour. So we'll just keep on going here. So, as you pull on a campus, if you come from this is the way a lot of people come from, you'll see our baseball fields first. So this is our baseball and softball field. Um, right in the front of campus, really nice facilities. 
A lot of the rest of our academic or athletic facilities, my bad, are in the back of campus. So um, you can see back here, this is kind of our entire, you know, athletic complex more or less. So we have our intramural fields back here. Um, so intramurals or IMs as we call them are kind of a big thing on Rose's campus. So a lot of res hall teams and Greek life will make their own intramural um, teams throughout the year. And they'll just play, it's usually like one or two games a week. You just get a chance to go run around for an hour and play some friendly you know sports against some of your friends so i know we have like soccer ultimate frisbee flag football um volleyball basketball a bunch of stuff like that so these are where the outdoor ones are played during the year so a lot of really just a fun way to relax um, we have our tennis courts here is over um our football field this is actually an older picture it just got renewed this past summer um it's a brand new like turf field now so it looks really nice and shiny so a lot nicer than what it looks like in this picture currently and then we have um, our SRC right here, so our Sports and Recreation Center. I think we can actually get some nicer views on the inside here. So I believe this one shows the pool. So we have a full-size pool um, for our swimming and diving team. You can also use it just to, to swim recreationally as well. And um, we'll also do fun events throughout the year like canoe battleship and log rolling competitions and all that kind of stuff. Um, I know some students also work here as lifeguards too, as like a, a work-study job on campus. I know a lot of friends of mine in high school did that, so... I know a lot of kids who came here and, and started to do that here as well. So really nice facilities. Um, and then moving along on the inside, I think we can get a shot of our arena, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. So here's our sort of main varsity sports arena. So this is where our um, varsity basketball and volleyball games are played. Um, and we have pep rallies and stuff like that throughout the year as well in here too. So just kind of our main sort of or athletic space for, for indoor sports um, like that. Um, all of our sporting events, I should mention too, are, are free for students to go to. So football games, basketball games, soccer games, kind of whatever you're interested in. If you're looking for something to do on a weekend, um, it's a great way to kind of get involved and um, go cheer on the, the fighting engineers throughout the, throughout the week. So especially if you have a friend or something on the team, it's really kind of a nice way to stay involved and show them your support. And then if we hop into the main field house here, I think this will show us the inside. Yep. So this is sort of the main um, field house of the SRC. So obviously a huge space, a bunch of different events here throughout the year. Um, these different, like, dividers can be raised or lowered, whatever you need them to be. So you can split this whole area up into, like, five different courts or something like that. Um, if you want to come out with just some of your buddies and play some basketball, you can ask the desk to move some of the basketball nets for you. They can set that up. They can set up volleyball nets. They can set up badminton, indoor tennis, all that kind of stuff. And um, we have like batting cages over there for that can be raised or lowered for the different baseball and softball teams. Um, so a lot of customizability. Whenever it's not being used by like a varsity sports team, you can come down here and, like I said, just kind of um, play some play some games with your friends, which is really kind of cool. Um, back we, here we have our bouldering wall. So if you're into rock climbing at all. Um, they update the holds on this like once a month, I think. We have a really active climbing club on campus. They go climbing in Indy um, almost every weekend if you, if you want to go do that. So they go in different competitions each year. So a very, very active club on campus for sure. Um, racquetball and volleyball courts back here. Um, back in this area, we have our uh, full weight room. So really nice view of the outside too, but a weight room in there. And then around the corner on the inside, we have our cardio room with different like treadmills. Um, elliptical is more like weightlifting equipment, that kind of stuff. So a lot of different spaces in here. And this building is open from like 6 in the morning to like 1 in the morning or something like that. So whenever you have time to get a workout in, um, they're usually open for, for you to come and do that. So really a nice space. Um, very new looking inside. So yeah. Um, so now we're going to shift towards the um, residence hall side of stuff. So here you can see, as I mentioned earlier, Speed Lake is kind of the center of all the residence hall activity on campus. So we're going to start, we're just going to walk from the SRC and kind of walk our way around um, and end up at the Union right here. So another question a lot of people typically ask me on tours is um, about parking on campus. So um, it is free to have a car on campus, even as a freshman. Anybody can park on campus if they want to. All you have to do is register with public safety just in case it's like parked illegally or something like that, or you have to move it for one reason or another. Um, they'll just give you a call so they know whose car is whose. But besides that, you can park in any student spot. So I live in Bloomberg Hall right there, um, and I park right here. So um, it's not far of a walk at all between different spots on campus if you want to park on campus, which is super convenient. Um, we'll move down here to get a better kind of street view of these buildings right here. So um, our first stop here are going to be what we call the triplets. So we have Mies up there, and then Sharpenberg right here, and then Bloomberg right back there. So we call them the triplets because they all kind of look the same, obviously. Um, these are all freshman residence halls, so the halls are typically grouped by 
um, different classes. Uh, different classes. So the freshmen all live in freshman halls, and then sophomores typically live in Procopo, and then juniors and seniors live in upperclassmen apartments halls typically. Um, so I've lived in Bloomberg for all four years, as I mentioned earlier. So all these buildings are co-ed as well. Um, Sharpenburg is also our gender-inclusive freshman floor, so um, a lot of great support networks for the LGBTQ community and that kind of stuff. So a great new space as of a couple years ago. That's that it got changed to that um, space, which has been super awesome these past couple years. So they've been doing a great job with that. Um, but yeah, these are great options to live um, as as freshmen for sure. I'm definitely biased because uh, I've lived here for all four years, but. Um, they're more like of a hall setting, so some of our other freshman halls you'll see are a bit longer, and they kind of operate as like a, a long like hallway essentially. Um, but these buildings operate more as like an entire building. So, in one of these buildings, you'll have two RAs that kind of work together in the building. Um, typically, like in my case in Bloomberg, we have um, a guy RA and a girl RA. To I'm, I'm in charge of the guys, and uh, my RA partner works with the girls. So, but we all end up kind of working together as a hall. Um, one of the unique things about Rose is our um, sophomore advisor program. So that is, um, they're sophomores by the name. Um, they live in the residence halls with freshmen. So every freshman RA will have um, two sophomore advisors that work with them. And then throughout the year, um, the sophomore advisor room is just kind of open as a hangout spot. So people will come in there and play video games, do homework, just kind of relax. Um, they're really, the sophomore advisors are super sociable people. That's just kind of who comes, you know, who gets the position of the most sociable people on campus for sure. Um, they're there as resources for the freshmen. They are there to answer questions about, you know, how school works, how do I register for classes, how does the dining hall work, how do I do laundry, that kind of stuff. Um, they also plan a bunch of fun events in the weekends and stuff like that too, like foosball tournaments, trips to go see movies or go out to dinner and stuff like that. So they kind of coordinate all the all the fun stuff that goes on in the hall. So Rose is really big about building a community, um, and that's definitely the biggest thing that kind of drew me um, to Rose was just the the community side of things. So um, that starts in the residence halls. We really, from the beginning, um, try to bring everyone in our hall or in our floor together as one kind of big community. Because we're small, you know, we have the ability to do that and have a lot more personal connections. So, like the first job, excuse me, the first job description for an RA or an SA is to make a personal connection with every resident on your floor. And that's, that's everybody. Um, so, you know, it's not just, the RA isn't just reporting, you know, broken light bulbs and all that kind of stuff. They are there to, to get to know you and to check up on you, make sure you're doing well, make sure you have a spot on campus, make sure you have a good support network moving forward, um, and all that kind of stuff to make sure that you are, you know, well well integrated in the Rose Hallman community. Um, one of the ways you do that in a residence hall is with what we call... Um, open door policy, which is really kind of a cool thing. So if you go inside a res hall, um, you'll see when you walk around the hallways, you see a lot of the doors are just kind of open. Um, I know speaking from personal experience, I have not locked the door to my bedroom in the entire four years I've been at school here. Um, and I leave it open pretty much all the time unless I'm like asleep or changing. So even if I'm not in the room, you know, when I leave my room in the morning to go to class, I'll leave my door wide open. Um, when I'm sitting in my room doing homework, my door is open. Um, and it really just kind of helps feel more like a, like a, more like a home as opposed to just like, you know, an institution essentially. Um, it's not just like a bunch of closed door hallways with white walls and all that kind of stuff. It's, you know, it's open. It feels more like a house does. Like I think about my house here and like I, um, at my home, you know, my doors are always open so I can talk to my mom or sister, whoever. And it's kind of the same way in the Rose Holman residence halls. Um, you know, if you're stuck in a calc problem, you can shout down the hallway like, hey, has anyone done, you know, number four on this homework assignment yet? And like your friend from, you know, down the hall will come and help you out or... Um, RS and SAs can walk around the halls and kind of see who's home and stop in, check how your day was, that kind of stuff. So it really encourages that kind of floor um, or hall community to be built um, right from the beginning, which is which is really kind of a unique thing to Rose for sure. So that's that's one of the biggest things that I think separates Rose from a lot of other schools um, is that sort of personalized community, um, which I you know really makes it feel like a second home to me for sure. Uh, moving along the road here, so um, the triplets right back there, we're going to move along here. We have our apartments um, residence halls, so this is for upperclassmen, as I mentioned earlier. Um, the apartments also have a couple things that are open to all of campus, too. So in here, we have a new eSports lounge open up this year, so if you're into video games at all, um, a bunch of brand new computers for you to use for free, just for the sake of being a student here. Um, if you like, you know, League of Legends or Fortnite or Minecraft or whatever you're into these days. Um, they have a bunch of cool stuff for you to use. We also have another dining option on campus, so we'll get to the main dining halls in the Union later on, but one of the other dining options on campus is called Rose Gardens. It's located in the apartments, kind of like a Panera Bread style place, so um, they have like bread bowls and soups and sandwiches and different things like that. Um, they also have a convenience store in there as well, so they have like different produce and milk and um, 
you know, Pepto-Bismol and batteries and energy drinks, kind of whatever you might need. If you don't want to go all the way to Walmart or something, you can just get that right in the middle of, uh, right in the middle of the res hall, which is kind of neat. And then moving down this way, we have Lakeside Hall. Um, oh, that's farther down. This is still apartments. Um, let me click down here. So, yep, so we have Lakeside right here. This is our um, newest residence hall. So this is also apartments um, style living. So you'll have uh, typically four people in like kind of one apartment. You'll have two bedrooms, and then you'll kind of share a common area and um, your own little kitchen as well, and your own bathroom too. So really a nice space. Um, this is kind of a cool view of, you have a basketball courts right there right behind. Um, here's the apartments, and then over here we have Lakeside. Um, one of the nice things about the res halls, in every res hall on campus, we have wonderful housekeeping staff. So they're phenomenal people. They'll talk to you for hours if you let them. They're some of the nicest people I've ever met. Um, but one of the cool things they do is that they'll check you and your roommate's schedule, and then once a week when you guys are in class, and they'll actually come into your room and they'll clean for you. So they'll vacuum, um, they will change the garbage and everything, um, and they'll actually change the sheets on your bed and give you fresh new linens, which is, we are, we are super spoiled at Rose. Um, and they are, they are a big part of that. So, yeah, phenomenal people um, and do a great job, you know, making it, you know, just kind of add into that community feeling. Um, we're going to head up this way and look at the White Chapel. So this is right on the edge of Speed Lake right here. Um, really a nice building. It's not really affiliated in particular with any like religious denomination or anything like that, um, but a lot of different churches from the area will come in and give services throughout the year here. Um, they also have like, yoga classes, sometimes like different music concerts in here. Um, one of the cool things you'll see, too, is that a lot of times um, couples who like meet at Rose will come back and get married here, so really kind of a nice um, view in the building, this huge glass front looking over the lake right here. Um, just kind of a really kind of cool spot on campus. And then zooming back out, we have Percopo Hall back here. So let me get back to the street view, get a better better picture of that. So Percopo Hall is our primarily sophomore living. Um, so it's kind of more, um, the rooms are kind of split up. Like um, There's like two rooms connected by a bathroom. So you have like your roommate and then two suite mates that are connected to the same bathroom as you. So that's kind of how the rooms are divided up. Um, one of the cool things about Procopo is a sophomore resident tutor program. So they have live-in tutors that, that live in the hall with you. So um, And they try to have one for pretty much every major. So whatever um, classes you're in, you can just kind of walk down the hallway. And they're living in the hall with you. So they're up probably as late as you are doing homework and stuff. They have different office hours and things like that. There's actually some classrooms in Procopo um, just as like study spaces. Um, sophomore year tends to be when the curriculum ramps up a little bit. So they're there to help make that um, as easy as possible and just kind of provide that sort of instant... Um, help that you might need if you were um, doing, you know, sophomore classes living in the sophomore residence hall. So, we'll zoom back out here. So then, if we move on down, we'll get to Speed Hall right here. So, Speed Hall is one of our freshman halls. Um, it is an all-male residence hall. So, as you can see right here, this is Speed, a great place, great place to live. Um, this is one of those more, like, floor-style buildings I mentioned earlier. So, each one of these like kind of floors operates as a unit, so each floor will have one RA um, and two sophomore advisors that live on that floor, and they kind of operate as like one unit essentially. Um, sometimes the buildings will collaborate between floors and kind of do stuff together, um, but throughout the year it's kind of mostly how they end up dividing up. And then BSB Hall right here, um, like it's right next to the academic buildings, which is really kind of nice location-wise. Um, so BSB is co-ed, so the top floor is girls and the bottom two floors are guys. Um, same kind of floor setting as Speed has, so one RA and two sophomore advisors per floor as well. Um, we also have the Escalate program in BSB, so if you're interested in business, like entrepreneurship at all, um, that is a program, a living learner community. Um, they all live in BSB and they kind of take classes together and live in kind of the same spot to, um, you know, focus on the more entrepreneurial side of, of engineering, which is kind of cool. And then further down, we have Deming Hall right here. So this is an all-male hall as well, all freshmen too. Um, still the same kind of floor set up, so right in the middle of everything, right next to the academic hall, right next to the union, so a lot of really cool space right there, um, location-wise. And this is a really nice shot of campus, I think, um, if you just kind of come down here to this drive. So this construction that you see right here is actually all done now, so we have a, a student pavilion outside that's just for students to, you know, hang out in. Um, it's covered in, like, glass. It opens up in the summertime, so you get a nice breeze through there. It's also heated in the winter, so you can kind of use it all throughout the year. Um, kind of a nice spot that's all you know just it's all totally done now so this construction is, is all gone but um, you get a nice view of the lake right here 
um, just kind of all the different academic stuff, or the residence hall stuff, my bad, um, during the day. One of the things, uh, you kind of see our floating dock, or our dock over here, so it is tradition on your birthday, Rose Holman, to be laked. <laughs> um, so what that means is that um, on your birthday, you are carried from your residence hall onto this dock right here and then tossed into the lake. So there's a fun little tradition we have. Um, my birthday is January 10th, um, so it's a little cold sometimes, but <laughs> um, definitely a fun tradition nonetheless. Let's see, I know there's a couple spots in our union we get to look at too, so I wonder if this one... I remember there were a couple of them I looked at before, and I don't remember which ones they were. Oh, this is an old picture of construction. So the union's totally done, um, so it is fully completed in construction. It was renovated at the end of my sophomore year, I think it was all done, so a couple years back. Um, we've had it for, for a little while now in its completed state. I think this one is a newer picture. Yes, so this is the bottom floor of the Union, so this is kind of a central hub for a lot of activity on campus. So you kind of walk in up here, it's more like a common student area. Um, we have a nice like presentation room down here. Um, the Center for Diversity and Inclusion is down this way, so they do a lot of different events on campus, bringing in different speakers, just doing different events to kind of encourage or promote diversity on campus. That's kind of their whole job. Um, up here we have we call Beanie's Cafe. It's a coffee shop. They sell Starbucks coffee. They're open till like 11:30 at night. So if you're up late doing homework or something, you can get a couple shots of espresso to kind of power you through that the next lab report you have to finish or something like that. Um, if you go up these stairs right here and turn left, you get to our main dining hall. It's kind of through these like wooden slats right here. Um, it's a lot better than a lot of other dining halls I've visited at different schools. It's run by Bon Appetit. Um, they do a great job bringing in a lot of different like locally sourced ingredients. I'm pretty sure they're like required by their company to have um, like at least 40% 40 40 of their food come from within like 100 miles of campus or something. So a lot of local stuff, um, a lot of really great food that I, I probably wouldn't have had if you know I didn't go to school here. It's not just you know chicken tenders and pizza every day. You know they have a lot of good stuff. Um, down here we have the Office of Student Affairs, so they are pretty much in charge of everything related to student life on campus. Um, fantastic people. Um, my bosses are in there as, as an RA, so I'm not just saying that because of that, they're, they're truly phenomenal people. So if you ever have any problems with anything regarded to life on campus, they're there to help out. Um, Chauncey's down here is kind of more of a restaurant style dining option, so they have different um, you like order and get a buzzer, you'll get like an entree, a side, and a drink, and they have burgers and salads and sandwiches and wraps and pizza and stuff like that. Um, so it's kind of a nice spot to do work in. Um, you can come in down here and do do work as well too. Upstairs, you can't bring your din your backpacks into the dining hall, so what you'll kind of see throughout the day, you can actually see a couple up there. Um, students just leave their backpacks outside the dining hall as they go in to eat. Um, and during like peak lunch hours, like this whole area is just lined with backpacks. You can see a bunch clumped up back there too. So um, kind of one of the testaments, just kind of Rose being a super safe and secure place. Um, we're kind of isolated. I mean, Terre Haute itself is kind of in the middle of nowhere, but then Rose Holman is kind of isolated within Terre Haute. So really the only people on Rose's campus are people who go here or people who work here. Um, so it's, it feels super safe and secure, and people leave, you know, backpacks and laptops and textbooks just out and about pretty much wherever they end up. So, I mean, these backpacks here probably have, you know, $2,000 laptops and a couple hundred dollar textbooks and calculators and that kind of stuff, and they're just kind of left around, and nothing ever gets stolen. Um, we just have a very kind of nice, close-knit community here on campus that makes sure everyone feels safe and, you know, everyone feels comfortable just leaving their stuff around. So, uh, really kind of a neat environment. You really have to see it to kind of believe it sometimes, you know, just all these backpacks lying around everywhere, but it's that way all across campus. You know, people just feel safe. Um, just because of that kind of tight-knit community. Everybody knows, you know, who's on campus, and you kind of recognize folks. Um, so it's kind of nice to sort of have that um, community built up. Um, but, yeah, that is that is kind of the main... A couple other things in the union, I guess, we didn't get to see. Um, career services are located in there, so they are phenomenal office, for sure. Um, I'm, I'm assuming people are coming to Rose because they want um, a job. They don't just want, you know, an expensive hotel for a couple of years. So um, career services are the ones who make that happen. Um, they are located right through these doors right here. So if you were to walk in and turn right, they have their office right there. Um, so if you want an internship or a co-op or a full-time job, they're the people to make that happen. So um, every major has their own sort of career advisor where they kind of know what jobs are in the industry, what's big and what's not. They can compare your offer to other offers in the past. And they also have a good alumni connection. So like one of, for example, one of my sophomore advisors this year, um, her dream job is to be an Imagineer at Disney. That's, that's what she wanted to do forever. Um, so... She told it to Career Services, and they were like, oh, we actually have a couple of alumni down in Orlando doing that right now, so we'll put you in touch with them. Um, they'll kind of tell you what steps to take to how to get to where they are. So a lot of really cool connections there, and they do a lot to help make sure that Rose Holman students have, have jobs by the time they leave this place. Um, a big part of that is the career fairs they bring in every year. They'll bring in three um, big career fairs, one each quarter. Um, 
and they'll fill up this the SRC, that big field house I showed you earlier. They'll fill that up with different boots and recruiters and companies, and you get to have face-to-face -face conversations with recruiters from, like, huge companies that usually wouldn't get to talk to normally. Like, I know SpaceX has been there, Google, GE, Honeywell, um, Eli Lilly, uh, Honda, Whirlpool, Marathon, a bunch of big places like that all come to recruit from Rose because they, you know, they know the caliber of students that Rose Hallman has, which is, which is super phenomenal. Um... So yeah, career services one of the one of the most important offices on campus for sure. So they they do a lot, um, and they make sure everyone has has something by the time they leave here. Um, we also have counseling services in the union as well. So they're over on this part of the union over here. Um, great counseling people there, phenomenal folks to work with. Um, yeah, that's just one of the other great great facilities. Health services also in the bookstore too are also located in the union. So like I said, pretty much it's a central hub for anything going on on campus. Um, but yeah, so. That is just about it, and I kind of ran a bit over the time here, but um, yeah, that that is most of campus. So if you do have time to come visit sometime in the future, I highly recommend it. Um, the virtual tour is super neat, um, but there's really just kind of something special to being able to walk around on campus and kind of get a feel for everything yourself. So I highly recommend coming in to get a tour um, at some point in the future. It's you know it's a great place. I love it here. It feels like a second home to me for sure. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I said or anything at all, um, feel free to use that connect feature that I pointed out earlier um, to get in touch with some Rose Hallman faculty and staff and also some students. Um, you could ask to talk to me in particular if you wanted to. I am, I'm more than happy to communicate with anybody and um, answer any questions I can just to help make you know the college system process easier. I know it's I know it's a, a tough call for a lot of folks. Um, I remember when I was going through the college selection process and just kind of everything that entailed. So. I definitely understand what, what choices you guys are having to make, but um, I've been super happy with my time at Rose, so I'll just kind of leave it on this nice view over here. Um, but yeah, it's it's been a great great four years for me so far, and like I said, happy to answer any questions you guys have. If you want to reach out, um, feel free to contact me. You are, you are more than welcome to. So thank you guys for, for watching, and um, best of luck going forward.